All right, so uh, let's jump into our final segment. And, uh, you know, Sterling, uh, you know, who is Sterling Luhan? You know, where, where are you originally from? Uh, tell us about how you grew up and, you know, your interests and things. Or, yeah. Yeah, so I'm originally from Texas. I will just say the Bible Belt, Texas. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a really small town. And as I was growing up, like I, we discussed a little bit about my life earlier, I was really a, the odd man out. And I'm sure a lot of you guys can identify with that. I didn't, you know, get along or fit into a lot of different particular cliques. I like to read Lord of the Rings and other, you know, sci-fi fantasy derivatives. And, yeah. and I read a lot of sci-fi as a kid too. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> I remember reading the, the hell out of Terry Brooks, you know, the whole Lord of the Rings derivative thing when I was growing up. And uh, I would also do a little bit of writing when I was younger, but it, it was unfortunate. And I don't, I don't like to try to place blame on anybody particularly, but I, I didn't feel like I was really given everything that I needed to nurture those type of qualities when I was younger, like some, some people may have had access to. So it wasn't until I had the MDMA experience later on that I was able to figure out uh, who I am, so to speak, and really introspect deeply and sort of find my path in life. But a few things that I like to do in my free time, I still, I still read religiously, um, just eat up books. I write every single day as much as possible. I try to schedule my writing, but it's been difficult. I also work a number of jobs. I'm a research assistant at a university. Like I said, I've almost got my master's degree in counseling. And I, I love, and, and that's another thing, I guess, with my bias and my particular perspective is that being a counselor, my job is to relate and work with other people. So I guess it's, it, that's a natural function also of who I am, um, you know, call that a, a, a negative thing or whatnot, but I, I really enjoy it. And it's part of uh, my passions. So that's a good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Counseling is a very uh, NF kind of thing you know to make another myers Briggs reference right. you know so i don't know you know i don't know if you are intp or or not but nf is or sorry yeah, counseling is definitely like infp uh, yeah i wonder i wonder if he's infp i wonder you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna take the damn test and I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna report it. back I'm gonna send it you're gonna be the first person george that i send it to <laughs> <laughs> All right. I look forward to <laughs> let me know. Let me know. <laughs> yeah, Stephen's fascinated by Myers Briggs stuff too. Involved yeah. in so many of the groups on Facebook. Uh, just, I eat it up. Eat all psychology up. Right. And there's a whole bunch of different. I mean, you know, the Myers Briggs was initially developed by Jung, I believe, yes. early on, and then mm -hmm. the Myers Briggs took it. There's all kinds of different personality tests. The, the Big Five is a good one you can look into as well, but it's a little different. Yeah, they just try to identify particular um, characteristics that right. are consistent between all people and, you know, go from there. And, you know, they're, they're always finding about more things and I have my own theories about how many personalities I think there are and I actually link that with like sacred geometry the 64 tetragrammaton yeah. <laughs> and so I think there's 64 archetypes of personalities probably four between the 16 personalities yeah I see oh the secret God. teachings of all ages behind you on your bookshelf there oh <laughs> yeah I know <laughs> guilty of the esoteric knowledge right. stuff Makes me either crazy or a mad scientist person. That's okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll accept you for who you are. <laughs> or, or I'll always, I always like to just throw out the casual doubt, or maybe I'm just faking all of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that would be so much fucking effort. So much work. To fake, to fake what exactly? Just to fake my existence. Ah. <laughs> I mean, God. Mm. I, know, I, I feel like that's just like a, I, I, that's all I feel. I feel like why would you waste time trying to put on a, a mask for others? That's, that's fucking exhausting. You always have to check in with yourself and see if that's what you actually were doing. And you, you, don't, you don't get to know who you are and you start to casually adopt those and convince yourself that is who you are. And yeah, it's just a fucking psychological mess. I find it way easier to just exist and flow. 
Um, Actually, our Western culture is one of the only ones that uses masks that way. Most of them actually use masks as a way of allowing your true self to flow out more easily. That's interesting. Mm, why do you say that? Or what, what culture do you reference for that? I'll have to pull up some sources to put in the show notes here. But yeah, basically the, nice. the idea is that when you're dressed up in a costume or if you're wearing makeup oh, or, you're, yeah. or you're like putting on some kind of an external projection – then it kind of breaks the bond with your own ego and makes you less self-conscious. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, you know, kind of like acting, sort of. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. yeah no. I found the Japanese, I lived in Japan for four years, I found the Japanese to be extremely mask-oriented. Whereas uh, I've been in Colombia now for a while, Colombians are much less so, you know, much uh, considerably more authentic. Not completely, but considerably more. They still wanna. They still got that superficial um, drive. They like shiny things. They like nice clothes. Yeah, appearance is very important in Colombia. Yeah. Appearance, yeah. Like you go out with, you know, like an old shirt or a faded shirt, or your hair's not quite combed the right way. You know, it's like that's a major faux pas. Yeah, that that aesthetic inclination is very prominent in Latin culture. It's like the plastic surgery capital, isn't it? Like, no, that's Thailand. Is it? No, that's yeah. that's for facial, right? But I think in Venezuela no. until recently, and Sex then change. Colombia. Oh yeah, that too. Uh, Colombia and Venezuela have always topped the charts in like uh, breast augmentation and stuff like that. Right? Yeah, yeah, and actually here uh, in Colombia they have these really weird massages. So the women who are a little bit, well, they'll get a little bit overweight and they'll go to these massages and the massage lady will massage up the back of her leg towards her butt and they'll do it over and over again for months and it will cause the fat in the leg to go up towards the butt and give them a bigger butt. What? It's so it is the weirdest thing. That is an interesting thought. Now we know why you live there. <laughs> <laughs> I am a butt man, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't know about <laughs> that until recently, you know, that particular practice. But yeah. Sounds like a good opportunity to start a business. And massaging Not butts? Not that, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh. All right. Oh, marvelous. Ask, ask Sterling a question. Yes, yes, Sterling. I mean, we kind of already have covered this, and I mean, uh, but I, I want to specifically get your opinion, and I kind of gave you a little insight into it on the Steam chat. What is your opinion on the link between positive psychology, self-discipline, and that kind of being a natural next step to philosophical anarchism. Uh, you know, I think that once somebody does consider the positive psychology aspects and makes themselves a more positive oriented individual and they exercise the self discipline to do so, um, then do you think it's a natural next step for them to consider? Uh, a lack of authority or a, a not a, a the anarchistic perspective of you don't need authority um right. it's yeah yeah I, I, I think that that's a possibility i'm not an expert on positive psychology i do know that studies in learned helplessness mm -hmm. have showed that people are generally more depressed and they're probably more likely and this is just a guess they're probably more likely to defer to various kinds of authorities when they're depressed or when they're in that state of learned helplessness which is a big part of the positive psychology movement understanding the effects that learned helplessness has on our psyche so to push that forward i would think that a person will be more likely to rebel in their own way as they start to get out of those psychological ruts that learned helplessness and start to look at themselves under a different light. So that does make sense, and so especially with the, the element 
of self-discipline because that those those traits or those qualities to me also lead to responsibility or to self-responsibility which is naturally opposed to authority or to people trying to run your life for you so i think that's a good uh, in internal compass that can put us in the direction of anarchism or put an individual in the direction of anarchism sure hmm. Although I think some people just by by their predisposition are inclined to a heavy, heavy respect for authority. And I know some people in the anarchist community are, you know, want to give their fit middle finger to every, absolutely every form of authority. And I think that uh, that's, that's, that's a mistake because even in a stateless society, there are going to be authorities, you know, they're going to be people running companies, they're going to be schools. There are going to be heads of family. There are going to be uh, respected experts. You know, there's going to be the guy who owns the parking lot and he's the authority there and the guy who runs the church and he's the authority there, you know. So I think, you know, authority is... Um, Psychologically natural in a certain way. Almost essential. Well, there's, there's two types. There's that which is genuine and earned. And then there's the kind that's false and it's forced on people. That's right. the kind that we're trying to step away Amen. from. So would it Amen. be like an, a mini archist society is probably what we would go for, pra for as far as practicality, if we were to no. philosophically identify it? No, I would call it like a, no, just voluntary. I don't think the, the, uh, the, the idea of anarchism or voluntarism necessarily excludes authority. I think some people turn it into libertinism or just pure chaos. And for them, then it becomes a complete rebellion against authority, you know. But I, I don't think you need to specify anything extra. It's just, you know, voluntary authority, you know. Yeah, I, I see what you guys are saying. I would just differentiate, and this is kind of in line with what Gabriel was saying, differentiate between voluntary or consensual authority versus, you know, iron fist tyrant with a gun down your throat authority. So... You know, that, that makes sense. There, there will be managers and bosses and things like that. And those are completely acceptable forms of authority. So I definitely agree with that. If you want to use the term authority in relation to those right. figures, I guess in their particular enterprises, they, they, they are a type of authority. That's, that's my, the difference in my mind. Anybody want to throw in any other questions for Sterling? Hmm. That seems like a good spot to wrap it up. If, if yeah. Yeah. Sterling, uh, why don't you uh, why don't you plug? Give us your plugs. Sure. Tell okay. everybody where to find you. You know all that. My main website is www.psychologic-anarchist.com. On Facebook, psychologic-anarchist and Sterling Luhan L U X A N, and also, theme it. It's at Sterling Luhan. And what else do I have? God, I have so many. You can also find me on the art of not being governed. I still do stuff on the Facebook page the art of not being governed and not being governed.com. And my YouTube channel is psychologic dash anarchist. Awesome. Okay. Well, thanks for being with us, Sterling. Uh, I really appreciate it. I think we've had a pretty good conversation. Uh, I, I uh, hope I didn't, uh, you know, come on too strong. I'm a pretty blunt uh, personality and I like to have, you know, really uh, deep conversations, you know. Uh, in, so. my, in my line of work and focus, you're pretty light work. <laughs> no, <laughs> challenge accepted. <laughs> Fighting words. Yeah. No, in, in all, yeah, in all serious, uh, that, no, a great conversation. I, you know, it's all right to be challenged. I like being challenged. I like having to, to think. And th this stuff is just super important and I, in, in either case. And I just want to be able, as my philosophy dictates, to relate to you in the best way that I can, empathize, and actually listen and hear what you have to say so that I can grow as an individual and uh, help other people grow as well, especially in the therapeutic process. Amen. And thanks everybody for listening. Uh, you know, ask us your questions, check us out, steamit.chat in the Steam Smart Podcast uh, channel. Have a great day.